If you haven't heard yet, big news about inflation dropped this week that sent ripples throughout the entire economy and is rightfully top of mind for almost every active or aspiring investor. While there is no need to panic, this news does have implications for pretty much every type of investment out there. And today I'll walk you through what all of it means. Welcome back to week two of Bigger Pockets newest YouTube series, Market Recap, or whatever we wind up calling this. My name is Dave Meyer. I'm the vice president of data and analytics. And each week I will examine the biggest news of the week in just about five to 10 minutes. This week, we're going to dive headfirst into just one big story, the recent inflation data released by the government. But before we jump in, please subscribe to Bigger Pockets YouTube channel. And if you like videos like this, please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. So last week, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released its April data from its benchmark inflation measure, the Consumer Price Index. This is also known as the CPI. And in case you haven't heard yet, it was up. The CPI rose 4.2% year over year, which is the highest such mark since 2008. Now let's not panic just yet. There is a lot to unpack here, but let's start with a very brief recap of what inflation and the CPI are. First, inflation, it's a very simple concept. It's basically prices rising. And unfortunately, this means that your money is worth less. Let's look at a very simple example. If you could buy a pizza for nine bucks last year, but then this year, because of inflation, it costs 12 bucks, your $9, which used to buy eight slices of pizza, unfortunately, now it only buys six. So you can see why everyone hates inflation, right? No one wants things to get more expensive or for their money to buy less. But it is important to know that a little bit of inflation is actually a good thing. If everyone expects prices to stay flat or fall, people don't really spend their money. They hold on to it. So the government targets 2% inflation per year to incentivize people to spend their money and keep the economy humming. The government tracks inflation because they have this vested interest in it. They track it in a few ways, but the most popular one is the consumer price index. It measures what consumers pay for goods and services, but excludes really volatile things like energy prices and food costs. And what we saw this week is that the CPI went up 4.2% year over year. This is signaling that we're gonna see a little bit more inflation than we have in more than about a decade. And as a result, we saw pretty much what we would expect when inflation signals flash, which is the stock market went down and bond yields went up. All this begs the question, why is inflation up in the first place? And to me, I think there are about three reasons. The first is the federal stimulus of the last year. There's a lot of new money flowing through the economy, and that tends to bring on inflation. Basically, when all this money is flowing through the economy, businesses can charge more and generally they do. The second thing is this sort of weird thing that's been going on because of the whole COVID-19 crisis. And basically there are supply chain issues impacting major industries like lumber, semiconductors, the auto business, and basically they can't keep up with demand. And as we know, when demand is soaring, like because we have an expanding economy right now, but supply is low, prices tend to shoot up. Lastly, there's something known as a base effect happening here. When you look at year over year rates like the CPI, we're comparing April, 2021 to April, 2020. And if you remember April, 2020, I know I barely remember that, that was like a lost month. But if you remember April, 2020 at all, you probably remember that it was a really bad month for economic activity. And as a result, prices were artificially low. And since what the CPI looks at is comparing this April with last April, we're starting with a really low year, eight month in April of 2020 compared to a great year uh, or a big year of price increases in April 2021. And it makes the difference between them look a bit more dramatic. Cool. Everyone with me so far? So a major measurement of inflation is up in April probably because of stimulus, supply chain issues, and the base effect. Like I said, this caused some mild panic last week, and we saw again what we would expect. The stock market went down a bit, and bond yields went up. And the reason this happens is because the government's main tool to fight inflation is to increase interest rates. This reduces the amount of money thrown through the economy and can be a pretty effective tool to fight inflation. 
But with increased interest rates comes pressure on the stock market and it drives bond prices down. So investors were worried. In order to ease investor fears though, the Fed came out last week and they said that they don't plan to raise interest rates. According to the Fed, they feel that these inflation numbers are expected and are going to be short-lived. Basically, they see it as the effects of an economy that has had a really bad year last year just gearing up again. And they also said important things that before they raise rates, they would need to see one, better jobs numbers, and would two, have to see a few months of sustained high inflation before they change their strategies. So this was good, and it seemed to have relieved some of investors' greatest fears, at least for now. The bottom line here is it's too early to tell if inflation is here to stay or if this is just a growing pain of the economic restart. But for real estate investors, you should rest easy knowing that tangible assets are generally considered the best hedge against inflation. Tangible assets are anything you can hold or touch like gold or real estate or baseball cards or really whatever. But let's be honest, we're here to talk about real estate. So let's talk quickly about how real estate, particularly rental properties, are a great hedge against inflation. When prices go up due to inflation, rent also goes up as well, and that hedges inflation. Property values typically appreciate at least as much as inflation, providing yet another hedge. And third, while expenses will go up from inflation, the principal and interest you pay on your mortgage does not. That's probably your biggest expense, so while rent is going up, your biggest expense is not increasing. So that can be another third hedge and great way that real estate helps protect you against inflation. So just to recap everything we've talked about today, as you hear more news about inflation in the coming months, which I assure you, you will, remember no one wants inflation, but it's still too soon to panic. And we just have to wait and see how the next few months shake out. But no matter what happens, investing in real estate is an excellent way to limit your risk against inflation. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you learned something that will help you guide your investing decisions. If you did, please give us a like, a thumbs up, whatever. Subscribe to this channel to see more. For Bigger Pockets, I'm Dave Meyer, and I'll see you all next time.